The violent behavior of school bullies captured on camera has become a common sight recently. This month alone, two shocking videos have surfaced, but the reality is bullying cases happen daily all over the country. In Alostar, a bullying incident turned so bad that the police had to step in. Students were arrested. This is unfortunately not the first time that such incidents have made headlines. Usually after all the hype, the case is forgotten. This week on Crime Watch Raw, we focus on bullying in schools and we speak to a victim of a violent bullying incident in Johor to find out what the developments have been like since the incident happened in August. Imagine the feelings of Mat Jasmuni Muhammad Yassin and his wife, Lassari Jamil, when their eldest son, 11-year-old Irfan Dawani, suddenly slipped into a coma after a bullying incident which had happened in this primary school early August this year. According to the family, Irfan and his best friend Haikal were beaten up by four school bullies. He suffered severe injuries. Malam sebelas hari bulan tu, uh, dia dalam pukul lima setengah macam tu lah. Uh, lima setengah pagi tu, dia datang ke akak dekat dalam bilik tu, lepas tu dia kejut. Umi, umi dia kata, badan Irfan sakit lah dia kata. Kepala sakit dia kata, kepala pening. Akak cakap, kalau pening pergilah makan ubat, akak cakap. Bagi dia ubat, lepas tu dalam beberapa minit macam tu lah, dia muntah balik kan. Lepas tu tiba-tiba senyap lah, dia masuk bilik. Dia masuk bilik dalam lima minit macam tu lah, dia menjerit. Ha, dia menjerit kuat. Hmm, dia kata sakit kepala, dia kata tak tahan. Akak bangun, akak tengok dalam bilik dia dah penuh dah. ni, Penuh dah muntah dekat bantal apa semua, akak kejut. Kejut ayah dia, suruh tengok. Saya terus mandikan dia, mandi bawa dia pergi bilik air kat atas tu. Dia dalam keadaan cakap, dia cakap dia sakit sangat. Saya, saya papah dia. Ha, saya papah. Dalam pukul 8 lebih pukul 9, saya nak bawa dia ke klinik Uzikin, kampung posi putih lah. Kenapa? Ia paling macam. Dia kenapa? Ke dia ada sawan ke apa? Saya kata dia kanak-kanak normal. Cuma dia demam pada sebelah hari bulan tu lah. Bawa ke dua belah hari bulan ni. Bila di X-ray dia cakap ada darah beku yang masih baru. Saya dengan orang rumah terkejut lah. Macam mana boleh ada darah beku yang masih baru kan? Dia cakap darah beku dah ada penuh kat kepala. Dia dah, dah tutup. Dah, dah tutup ke air otak dia tu. Irfan's parents couldn't figure out what was the cause of their son's condition, but a phone call from a neighbor who is also a mother of Irfan's best friend Haikal gave his parents an idea of what could have happened. Ma, mak kawan dia ni telefon bagi tahu akak. Dia kata Irfan sebab kena pukul ke? Akak cakap dulu masa dia kena pukul. Lepas tu dia kata, hari tu Irfan kena pukul dekat sekolah dia kata. Irfan kena pukul dengan Haikal dia kata dua orang. Haikal nak tolong dia. Tapi Haikal sempat lari. Upon learning Irfan's actual story, Jasmuni filed a police report before going to his school on August 16. Saya tanya, uh, macam mana kes ni? Tanya kepada? Turu besar tu. Okay. Dia cakap, kenapa tak ajak dia bincang dulu? Kenapa buat report polis? Tu cikgu disiplin, saya tanya, cikgu dah tahu tak kes ni pada 6 hari bulan? Dia cakap, baru nak siasat sebabnya uh, Irfan ni okey. Tak ada apa-apa. Sepatutnya cikgu panggil saya ni, saya datang jumpa cikgu. Ada tu alasan cikgu disiplin sebab uh, hari Sab, Jumaat Sabtu cuti. Sebab tu dia tak boleh hubungi saya. Itu saya geram tu. Ibu bapa yang empat orang ni pun dah buat bar, uh, buat report untuk menafikan anak dia. Mak bapak dia pun tak ada jumpa saya, tak ada minta maaf ataupun bertanya khabar pasal dia pun tak ada langsung sampai sekarang termasuk cikgu kelas dia, cikgu disiplin dia, cikgu-cikgu dia, sekolah kebangsaan Kota Masa dulu sampai sekarang. Irfan's father highlighted his son's case to many parties, including politicians, but none of them have offered any help. He said only the police would update him from time to time on their investigations on the case. Kak jaga sendiri kat rumah dengan dengan mengandung, dengan bila suami kerja tu, akak dekat rumah jaga dia ni, akak kena dokong dia pergi bilik air, nak buang air apa semua kan, mandikan dia. Masa tu memang emosi, tak tahulah nak cakap. Dengan kita nak jaga emosi dia, emosi kita yang mengandung, emosi keluarga lagi. Hmm, tapi tak ada siapa pun yang, ni lah, maknanya macam ni, macam ni lah. Senyap macam tu je. Hmm. 
akak ingatkan selama ni dia dia mengadu-ngadu tu akak ingatkan takat uh, apa macam kawan gurau kawan-kawan lah akak tak tahu pun sebabnya kita kalau mak bapak kan kalau kita kan anak kita bergaduh takkan kita nak cakap pukul lah balik kan mesti kita kata jangan tak apalah jangan lawan apa semua kan After the incident Lestari started to remember more on Irfan's past bullying cases Jiran akak lah yang bagi tahu kan dia kata uh, Acik dia kata tadi Irfan nak masuk dewan dia kata uh, lepas tu Irfan nak masuk dewan Irfan kena tendang kat perut dia kata lepas tu Irfan buat apa Irfan tak buat apa-apa Irfan diam aja dia dekat rumah pun dengan adik-adik dia dia kena bully dengan adik dia dia tak lawan budak tu selalu ke bully adik hmm, kadang-kadang hmm cikgu rasa cikgu tak ada berapa orang selalu Hmm, selalu ni seorang dua orang Seorang dua orang, orang yang sama? Hmm, kadang-kadang orang lain Yang uh, yang yang bully kita ni uh, Ada bully betul-betul Dari bila? Dari masa saya nak event hmm, Dajah berapa? Hmm, dari tiga Cik, Kalau pernah bagi tahu cikgu? Tak pernah lagi Kadang-kadang cikgu biarkan je Cikgu nampak? Cikgu tak nampak nanti kalau kadang-kadang ada budak cakap kena bulu nanti cikgu biarkan je. Hmm, cikgu tak pernah tanya Irfan kena uh, pernah kena bulu ke tak ke? Hmm, tak. Tak. Tak pernah guru besar tak pernah panggil. Tak. Bila kita tanya dia dia cakap uh, uh, murid kita pantau dia kata. Kita dah counseling kita pantau. Tapi cukup ke kalau setakat tu je? We went to the school to meet with the principal but we were chased away by the security guards. We later spoke to the headmaster who claimed he was not in a position to comment. The case is still pending to be brought to court. Four months after the incident, the family is still seeking for proper closure. Will the family receive justice that they seek? And most importantly, will the bullying stop? The children's voices are not being heard so it is up to us adults to speak up, face the issue and stop the bullying. Irfan's story is just one example of how bad bullying can get. The Education Ministry recently said that they are moving towards zero bullying at schools. But how are they planning to do this? We speak to Deputy Education Minister P. Kamalanathan on the matter. Teachers have been trained. We give them uh, during the training. We tell them how to identify a potential bully, uh, potential victim, or even students in groups. They they monitor, and that's that's one way uh, we do. And um, we will also um, try to increase the discipline methods uh, to make sure children do not break uh, rules and laws in school. We've also created complaint boxes in schools. You just need to put that complaint in the box, it'll be investigated. If you find that you're, you have complained to the school and no action was taken, of course, the first thing you need to do is to inform the Parents and Teachers Association. Okay, now you have a doubt that the Parents and Teachers Association will actually listen to you. You can go to the District Education Department. And then, if you're still not happy with the District Education Department, you go to the State Education Department. Normally, by the time it reaches State Education Department, they will have a solution. The question is, what kind of punishment do you think that we should give to the bully? Uh, when we do that, okay, probably they would think that, let's sack him from the school. Yeah, it's, it's quite, quite straightforward. But we must remember we are destroying the future of a child. We will not condone such behaviour. Okay? We need to find immediate solution. And as I've told you just now, this has to be done uh, among everyone. There has to be a good relationship with the school, the parents, stakeholders, community, police. We work closely with the police. When a child goes to school, the only thing that a child gets is education. Nothing more than that. And we need to work together. Everybody, you know, even the media, has played an important role. I apologize to parents who think that the Minister of Education or my colleagues in the school, or the district, or the education department did not pay attention. I can assure you, uh, it's not that. They may have other limitations. For example, when a school makes a report to the school while we investigate, and if the report is made to the police, although we would have 
concluded the investigation, we will not be able to take any action until the police investigation is over. Before we end this week's episode, we bring you some of the crime highlights for the week. Charles Marais, the brother of murdered Deputy Public Prosecutor Kevin Marais, held a controversial press conference on November 25th. He claimed that his other brother, Richard, was offered an incentive to cremate Kevin's body as soon as possible. Charles claimed that there was an ulterior motive to the third party offering incentives and prepared a statutory declaration on the matter. In the statutory declaration, Charles claimed that he had a pen drive containing information relating to Kevin's death and how certain influential people in the country could be involved. He had said the pen drive was currently in safe custody in the United States and had left instructions for its contents to be disclosed should anything untoward happen to him after making the statutory declaration. He has since left the country. Meanwhile, in Penang, two men were fined for verbally abusing a Penang Island City Council officer. The duo abused the officer after she clamped their vehicle. One of the men was also sentenced to serve 150 hours of community service. Bullying may seem just like silly teasing among children, but the danger is when it turns into violent acts. Viral videos and reports of such incidents only show us the surface level of the problem. It must be addressed from the root. Desiree Gasper, Crime Watch Raw.